respawn cranking. Um, I'm out here today on Kentucky Lake and the water temperature has been really cold all spring and now it's up in the 60s finally. Um, I went around today looking for dirty water. The water's coming up and the bait has moved back into the bays and I am looking at those bass that are a little bit easier to get at. Um, my favorite bait for this type of, my, this type of deal is a lipless crankbait. And so I've uh, I pulled up on a flat point today and I've had one, one swipe at it, pull them about 10 feet and get off and then I caught one about five and a half pounds. So that, that tells me that they're sliding up there, um, getting on these shallow bars, feeding up and they're about to go to the banks and spawn. Um, I figure it could happen. It could happen in two weeks in the full moon. Um, and if the weather comes and knocks it back, you know, it could be, could be further back in the year. I think there'll probably be a wave in April and another wave in May. But all I'm doing, I'm just, uh, on these flats, there's isolated rock, there's stumps. But the most important thing I've seen and the reason I stopped on this place was because I saw the bait fish going crazy in here. Shad were in here flicking like crazy. And my first cast, I caught a yellow bass, and on my second pass, I, I caught, you know, I had one about three pounds, and then the very next cast, I had a six pounder. So, it's just, I mean, that's kind of how it goes this time of year. You find just little key places. We got groups of fish moved in here, gorging on the bait, filling themselves up so they can run to the banks and go do their thing. So, there's a storm rolling in today. That always helps. You can catch it before a front. Um, that'll really get the bait fish active, really get the bass active. Um, those are just some of the things I look for. You can kind of see behind me, this, this is just a flat, long tapering point. Um, just gives those bait fish a place to run up and meander around, feed on the algae and stuff, which in turn, all that bait being up there brings the bass in there too, so. I want a new lipless crankbait today. Um, this is the uh, Duo Realis uh, Vibration G Fix. It's a real narrow profile bait. You can see how, how narrow that lipless bait is. And it casts a mile. This is the half ounce version. And that's one of the nice things about you know fishing these long tapering points. I can make a long cast across it, down it. You know, I can cover a ton of water. And, I, I'm not burning it. I, it looks like I'm really reeling it fast. I'm just, I'm just reeling it fast enough where it's kind of every now and then it kind of hits the bottom or it hits the stump or it hits the rock. I don't want to reel it so slow that it's going to get snagged and I don't want to reel it so fast that it's not down there making contact. I'm just, I just want it to kind of every now and then kind of skip and stutter. And it seems like I was doing that just a minute ago when I caught that good one. I was just reeling it real easy and it would bump and then it'd go about five or six feet and bump, go about five or six feet and then it just loaded up, you know. One key thing I do this time of year too, you know, I came up on this flat point, I saw the bait here. I started firing around, I caught a white bass. Then I caught, you know, I had a three pounder that looked like to be hooked and when it jumped, it got unhooked. And then the very next cast, I caught a nice one. And so, when that happens, I throw the power poles down. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a fan cast all around this flat point, and then I'm gonna lift the power poles up and I'm gonna reposition down maybe 10 yards, power pole again, and I'm gonna fan cast around it. I know there are good ones here. So there's no sense in just blowing through here, making 10 casts and leaving. I mean, there's, there's a potential, there could be a 20 pound limit here this time of year. So you catch those pre-spawn fish staging up on a big flat, a big long point, you know, some, some type of area that's conducive to holding a lot of bait will also have the potential to hold a lot of bass.
It's a big old bass. I thought it was a drum. I think he's foul hooked. I think he's got it in the side of his face. I swore it was a drum. If that had got off, I'd have told you it was a drum. It's nice, it's about a five pounder, but he must have his mouth closed because he's not even trying to come up. We're just gonna go easy with him because I have no idea how she's hooked. Take her time with her. She should just have one little hook in her. Yep, she's got it on the outside of her face. And right there's a little tip. I just push my thumb and let her take a little, because when they make those hard runs, sometimes I just don't trust the drag to always do it soft. Let's see if she's tired. How's that one? <laughs> That's the Duo Realis G-Fix Vibration Bait. It's just came out. Um, we're actually doing a product review on it today, and I'll just go ahead and tell you it works. That's a, uh, I just lost another good one. I've got a six pounder, I call it. You'll see some pictures of that. And oh man, well she snagged in the meat. Goodness gracious. All right, well we're gonna unhook her, but that's it right there. Lipless crankbait fishing at its best. Prey spawn females up on these flats. You gotta love it. Look at that one. <laughs> Eating it. Gotta like it. No, seriously, I mean, I love it. This this happens so infrequently when the, when the front's coming in and they're wanting to move up to spawn and the lake temperature of the water just went up like, I don't know, like 10 degrees in the last two days. I mean, you can tell looking at this fish. Boy, he ate it. I mean, not just a little bit. Where my pliers at? All right. Hold on, girl. My hands are all slippery now. All right. Got her. I mean, that's a three and a half pound fish. They're so fat. Wanting to move up. They're feeding up for the spawn. Gotta love it. Begging. Another big one. I was reeling it that time. Killed it. I reeled it, killed it to let it go back to the bottom, and I mean, he just hammered it. I mean, I'm telling you, there ain't fishing funner than this. <laughs> I have not caught a fish under three and a half pounds. Unbelievable. You love Kentucky Lake. <sighs> How about that one? Is that a pretty good one? <laughs> chunks, buddy. All chunks. This is awesome. I figure right now I've had about, my best buy is about 23 right now. Maybe 22. I got a big one in the live well. I'm gonna lay her. Let's see how much this one lays. Son, I'm talking about drilling them. That's another big one. I mean, I'm talking about forevermore drilling them today. <laughs> I am throwing, yeah, waller around out here. I like it. Show off for the camera one time. There you go. <laughs> Are you done? No. Thinking about, oh, crossways in the mouth. Oh. You don't think he's eating that one? <laughs> you got it sideways in there. 
I'm, I, this is the new, this is my first day throwing it too. This is the new Duo Realis G-Fix vibration plug. I'm talking about, that's a chunk right there. Look at that thing. Are you kidding me? Huh. Look at that dude. I mean, I've got a pile of these today like this. Four pounder, three pounder after four pounder after three pounder after five pounder. Man, what a pretty fish. That bait right there is slaying them. I mean, it's unbelievable. I don't know, I mean, you could probably pick up another lipless bait right now and catch them, I'm not saying that. But I've caught two, three big ones now running this bait along and then kill it and it just, it, cause it's got, it's like a, like a red eye shad's famous for, you know, instead of going like tear dropping down, it runs along and then it goes, it kind of shimmies on the way down. So I've been running it, you know, kind of bumping along the bottom, bumping along the bottom. And then when I get out there over five, six feet, I let it fall back to the bottom and, you know, do some of that, some of that zigzag up and down. And I've caught a bunch doing that now. When I was first catching them, they were right up on the bank. You'd reel it about three turns, you know, bumping it in real shallow rocks. That's what they're doing. They're up there feeding. I mean, it's unbelievable how good they're biting today. That front's blowing in. It's supposed to pour down rain. I got another big one right there. I mean, dude, I just threw it up on the bank right there. This is unbelievable. I've been power poled down now for about 25 minutes. trying to be easy with them because sometimes you just they don't get it real good you might just have one little hook in them oh, get out from under the boat thank you this feels like a pretty good one but a lot, bunch of them have been foul hooked today it's coming up that's a good one But I'm just, I'm throwing a lipless crank. It's a pre-spawn deal. The water warmed up 10 degrees in the last two days. It's gonna rain the next two days with 70 degree water. I mean, they are gonna go to the banks, these flat, long tapering points and baits the key. I mean, I pulled in here this morning. This is a place, last year, some fish got here. They were all 10 inches. You don't write those places off just because they're 10 inches. This is a place that pre-spawn bass get. This time, I mean, I just, I don't know where this school came from, but dude, every one of them's a nice one. I, every fish I've caught today is three and a half pounds to six and a half pounds. Every one of them. I haven't caught a, a non-keeper yet. I mean, it's just some days are just like that. Please don't do that. You got off? No! Golly, I was about a six pounder. Stuck my jacket. Man. That's why you net them right there. Quit fooling around with them at the side of the boat. Just net them. Uh, that's painful. I mean, I've caught a bunch of good ones today, but I want to catch them all. I'll tell you one thing, the new boat's officially broke in now. <laughs> I've had probably 12 over four today. Several three pounders too, it's crazy. It's just, it's a timing thing. You just gotta keep checking it even though you don't catch them for the first several trips. I've been out here three or four times now. I just really haven't caught them that good. And uh, lots of little fish, lots of them little bucks. Which made me think, okay, well, the females aren't really up on the banks. Maybe they're ganged up on some flats and some points in the bay. It's just waiting for the water to get right, the bait to get in there. The bait really didn't move in there until this week. And I think that's the key. When I pulled on this spot this morning, it was loaded with bait. I saw it when I scanned across it, 
and I could see it once I got up there and stopped the engine. I could see them start flipping around everywhere. And that's everything. If you know they're pre-spawned and you know they're trying to feed up before the spawn, then you got to go where there's a bunch of bait. I just got lucky and the fish and I finally intersected. I haven't been on them for several days and they finally decided to get up where I've been waiting for them to get up. I guess that's called being ahead of them. We're stubborn as fishermen like that. We, oh, I caught them this way last spring, on this place last spring, on this bait last spring. And they've, I mean, this is a place where they've got four, but, you know, they, like I said, they got here last year. There was not, there wasn't a keeper on it. I didn't catch a keeper on it all spring. That's just, that's part of it. You just wind around. But the big key for me today was, you know, I, I caught that one good fish going down the point and decided I would, there was so much bait in the area, I was like, there's no way that's, that's a random fish. So I power pulled down and just started firing casts around until I kind of figured out what it is they're doing. I'm impressed with that little lipless bait though. And like I say, I mean, I'm sure I could have caught him on a red eye shad and I could have caught him on a XR50 or something like that too. And when they're feeding, they're feeding. But this bait, I mean, you can literally throw this bait. I think I could throw past the back end of my spool with this bait, especially with the wind blowing at my back. It runs good, it falls awesome. I've caught several just killing it like that. And I'll see it go, you know, you'll, you'll just quit reeling and all of a sudden it'll, boom, you'll see your line jump or you'll feel it jerk on the rod. You know it's a fish when you ain't reeling and <laughs> something happens to your line. But the biggest thing is, like I was even myself starting to get discouraged the last couple of trips, like, man, I must need to go back out to the main lake. They just aren't getting up here yet, even though they normally are this time of year. Now you're just waiting for it to get right. I don't know if it's a combination of water color and, and uh, a front blowing in and the baits finally moved in here and the water temperatures finally go up. I mean, there's all these variables that come together for you to have one of those just bang out awesome days like this. Check us out at wired2fish.com.